Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Trogly's Guitar Show. We have the Rainbow Zoot Suit SG today, as we continue on on our quest to document every single Zoot Suit that was made. So, if you're new to the channel, you haven't seen the other videos, this was a series of SGs built from 2009 all the way until 2012. They offered them in rainbow, red and blue, orange and black, red and black, and finally black and natural. Now in order to get these to be multicolored guitars is they actually take a bunch of layers of birch wood and they dye them. So there's not actually any finish on this guitar, it's simply just dyed wood. And once they glue them all together, they carve the SG body shape out of them. Now this is not your typical SG, it's not flat, it's very curvy, and that's how they expose all the different layers. Because the top is very similar to like a Les Paul in the fact that it's got quite a belly to it. I mean, these look like really thick SGs. But since it has a belly, they actually had to do the opposite on the back. It kind of caves in. So this is great for somebody who has a larger stomach because your stomach just kind of disappears into the guitar. <laughs> this particular one is 25 different layers of wood. The rainbow one's probably the easiest one to count that on because you have separate colors for each layer. The neck is also built in a very similar fashion. Once again, dyed birch wood, bunch of them glued together and then shaped out into like a 50s neck profile on these. This particular neck, I counted 37 different layers. And then if you count like the wings of the headstock, I got 46. So this is pretty much the strongest neck that Gibson has ever built. Your fretboard is made of ebony though, because these made it just before ebony got really difficult for Gibson to use. Another fancy feature about these guys is you have clear bobbins. So you can see the copper color wiring of the pickups, and you also have transparent pickup rings. That way you can still see the color underneath. But what I thought was really interesting about this particular example is the way they routed this bridge pickup. The other two Zoot Suits I've currently torn apart and cleaned did not have this, but they kind of like actually routed out a spot for this pickup ring. So you have a clearly visible blue layer, and that kind of comes through on this transparent pickup ring. I think that would have been really cool if they did that with the neck pickup too. It probably would have been in the yellow layer, so it would have appeared yellow. And while we're talking about cavities, I love the cavities of these guitars. Neck pickups, they have a sweet multicolored layer that you can see. Back control cavity as well, and even the truss rod cavity. And you can also see all the many different layers along the side. Now the SGs feature a 496R and 500T bridge pickup. Those are very hot sounding pickups. So these are really good for like modern day metal stuff, especially this bridge pickup. It really overdrives your amp in a great way for metal tones. However, I always find these types of pickups a real pain in the butt to record with because they peak my mics no matter what settings I have. I usually have to turn the amps really down. Maybe I'm just doing something wrong with them. But for recording, I hate these pickups. But for playing metal, yes, they're very good for that. Now this one I am nicknaming the Freckled Clown. Now, clown, obviously because it's multicolored here, you could also go with like a jawbreaker. But the birchwood has a lot of freckles in it. You can see these like brown dots all over in the wood. And I thought since it had those, it would make much more sense to call this the freckled clown guitar. Because it's all over here on the body. You have some up here as well, and right there. And it's even got a freckled butt. <laughs> And what's even more fascinating is even the fretboard is freckled. Now, I'm not sure what caused this on the fretboard, but you can see what looks like water droplets up and down it. I thought for sure that once I cleaned and oiled this fretboard that those would disappear, but they didn't. 
So I'm not really sure what caused those, but at least it ties in our whole theme of the freckled clown SG. Now, as far as the zoot suits go, I think black and natural will always be my favorite. And the rainbow SG was one I probably would have never purchased on my own had I not bought an entire collection of them. Because in photos, these, they don't look that appealing to me. However, I can finally appreciate this guitar now that I've had it in person. This is kind of one of those finishes you need to see up close to fully get why this guitar is cool. From straight on, this looks like a mess. I'll agree with you guys on that one. But when you're looking at the guitar, it looks like this. You see all these many different colors. You don't see it just from straight on. Because straight on, it looks predominantly orange, and then you've got some red and natural going on. And that's not that attractive. But once you see all these colors, that's when you can get excited about this guitar. So I definitely have a newfound respect for a rainbow one, and I probably would purchase another one now that I've seen it in person. And as always, my favorite viewing spot of this guitar is always the side of the headstock. I actually prefer this rainbow one because all of the different colors. And it's always a nice feature that Gibson did the cutout on the overlay so you can see it on the face of the headstock as well. So now that we've learned a little bit about these guitars, let's go ahead and hear how this particular one sounds. <laughs> how this guitar sounds, let's go ahead and review its condition. Now out of the complete collection of six Zoot suits I purchased, this one is probably the least favorable condition. It's the most trashed. And when I say most trashed, it has like one mark on it. 
it's right here on the face of the headstock. It looks like it dinged up against something. I polished that up as best as I could. You can just barely see it when you know you're looking for it. But besides that, this guitar is really clean. Since these have more of a satin finish to them, they're not really gonna show polishing swirls and scratches that much. Your truss rod works just fine. It's hardly been adjusted at all. You have your stock black nut and your frets show very minor wear. Your ebony fretboard was just cleaned and oiled. And once again, you do have those weird water dot like patterns that I'm calling freckles. They're not ever apparent, but they are there and should be known about. And the other cool thing about these SGs is they have 24 frets. So you have a full two octaves. Most SGs stop at 22. But here you can see just light average play wear. I mean, there's not a lot on this guitar, but it's not, you know, 100% mint or anything. But seven different colors make up the rainbow one. You have a natural, red, purple, blue, green, yellow, and orange. And this example appears to be all original, except for maybe the bridge has been replaced. This is a locking bridge. I don't believe they came stock, but a lot of these ones in this collection I purchased have locking bridges and some even have locking tail pieces. I'm guessing wherever that guy got them from, somebody liked to upgrade his parts. Something to note about this locking bridge though is there's only one screw to lock it down on the base side. The treble side is missing that little screw. So it's kind of just acting as a normal bridge at this point. But you have your original pickups in here. You might want to readjust them to your own personal tastes. I'm guessing this is why I had so much trouble recording this guitar with the bridge pickup sounding so loud. Is because now that I look at it, it's like almost touching the strings, whereas the neck pickup is kind of sank down more into the body. So you can adjust those just by using the height adjustment screws right here. And then that will be set up to your own liking. As usual, the plastic knobs have little cracks in them. I think just about every Zoot suit we've looked at has had that issue. Back of the headstock, serial number 02029035 made in USA 2009. And again, you're seeing 46 different layers right here on the headstock. And then once you move to the actual neck, it is 37 layers. At least that's what I counted. I think this is probably my favorite neck on these SGs. It, I just love all these colors. I think it looks kind of cool. And it is a 50s rounded neck profile, so definitely not slim. And the back of the guitar, you don't see as much color on the back, and that's a little bit of a downfall to this example in my opinion. You've kind of got a lot of blue and a lot of natural, but that's just kind of how it is. You've got some light scratches on the back, but again, these things don't necessarily show wear and tear that much. In fact, the design of these being concave actually kind of helps with buckle rash. It's like the guitar is scared of your belt buckle and it caves in on itself. So I guess that's another cool feature about this guitar. Take a look at the sides here. There's no major gouges in this guitar. It's just that one ding on the face of the headstock and that's about it. You still have your original strap buttons on this one and everything's looking good. We'll take a look under black light. It's a very thin finish and it's not gonna glow a lot, but you can see it does glow some. Everything is looking the way I would expect to see though. No major surprises on this one. Unlike that other one that had those few touch up areas, this looks really cool to me under black light though. This reminds me of like a laser tag place. It's like the same paints that they would use on the wall. Very cool on that. I love the hourglass shape. But the neck is also looking good. I would love to see a repaired headstock on a zoot suit because I bet you wouldn't even be able to break this thing. You can see it looks like maybe some of the clear coat has been worn off, maybe by somebody trying to polish that little ding off. 
but it definitely passes the black light test. I say this in every Zoot Suit video, but I don't understand why they did not give these things cases originally at the factory. They shipped these things with gig bags, so this one has been upgraded to a Gibson Gear SG case. You've got four latches on the front and a functioning handle, and it's just got some light wear and tear from storage. The interior is kind of a light gray color. It kind of reminds me of an Epiphone case with this interior, but it's got really nice heel support. You've got good padding along the edges and you've got a double neck rest. So as far as the case goes, you can't ask for too much more. You also have some case candy. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of the Zoot Suit SG in Rainbow, feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash troglies, T-R-O-G-L-Y-S. Thank you, Troglies, for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.